when you are using XLOOKUP, sometimes the values you're looking for, they may be stored as a mix of number and text within the range you're looking within. In this video, you are going to learn how to create a formula by nesting one XLOOKUP in the fourth argument of another XLOOKUP. This way, whatever you're looking for, being a number or text, they will be matched. This is the 14th video of the XLOOKUP Inside Out series. If you haven't watched the previous videos yet, I will suggest you to watch at least the 12th and 13th video of this series, then you will have better understanding of this lesson. You can download the training Excel file from the link in the description below so you can practice online. Now let's dive into it. If you are practicing online with the download Excel file, this file we're using is SuperExcel 14 XLOOKUP both number and text. Here in column H, we have a list of customer number, and we wish to get the city name of the customer ID. And those customer IDs, they are in this list over here, along with the corresponding cities. This seems to be a simple and easy XLOOKUP, but we do have some underlying issue. Now, let's start with a regular XLOOKUP. Let's see what will happen. Equal sign, XL, tab to insert the function, left arrow key to set the cell H13, which is the customer ID we're looking for, comma, from the customer ID in column B. Let me use my left arrow key to go to column B, from B13, control, shift, arrow down, F4 to make the absolute, comma, then return the corresponding city in column C. Let me use my left arrow key to go to column C, from C13, control, shift, arrow down, F4 to make the absolute, then colon bracket, now, if I enter the formula, I get an A. When you do an X lookup, and if you omit the fourth argument, then when that first argument value is not being matched in the second argument range, then you get an A, which means this 1404 is not being matched over here. Even though we see 1404 over here, but this 1404 is different from this 1404, because this cell is a text cell, and that cell is a number cell. I can prove this to be text by using a function equal sign is text against the cell h13 colon bracket enter. I get it true, that means this is a text. And the 1404 in cell b19 is a number. I can prove that with the function equal sign is number against the cell b19 colon bracket enter. That gave me true, that means this is a number. So this text 1404 cannot match with number 1404. That's why we're getting this NA. But you have learned in the previous two videos of the XLOOKUP inside our series. We can make that first argument to be a number, but still being that 1404. And that can be done with a value function. So let me do that. VA tab to insert function, add a colon bracket after the H13. Now, we're not looking for that H13 anymore. Instead, we're looking for value of H13, which becomes a number, which can match with number 144 over here. So now, when I enter, I do find the match. Now, if I copy the formula down for the rest of the custom ID, I will get an A for a few other custom ID. If you look at the second custom ID, 1869, versus the custom ID here, 1869, those two cells are not the same. This time, this is a number, and that one is a text. Let me prove that with an is number function against this cell h14. That give me true. That means this is a number. But this 1186 is actually text. I can do a lot of function equal sign is text to prove that against that cell b15. Enter. That give me true. That means this is a text. And you have learned again in the previous two videos of this series, we can use a lot of approach by changing that first argument to be text. So if I do that over here, equal sign, XL, tab to insert the function, looking for this cell H14, but not really H14. We want to look for that as a text. So we can combine that with blank, double quotes, double quotes, comma. So now we're not looking for H14. We're looking for H14 combine it with a blank, which turns into a text with same value. Now we look for that from the column B. Let me go to the column B with my left arrow key and up, starting from B13, 
control shift arrow down a fourth makes the absolute comma then return the cities in column c let me go to column c from c13 control shift arrow down a four to make the absolute Code in bracket enter you see this time we do find a match because we turn that first argument to a text as 11869 which can match with text 1869 over here so we got the match now if I copy the formula to all the other records and uh, you will see some of those work some of them didn't because for the first one apparently this was already a text when you combine that with a blank that's still text but the one for the four over there is a number so you couldn't find the match now we have a dynamo if we do the first approach some of the customer will find the match but some other wouldn't if you do the second approach again some will find the match and some wouldn't so now the two will do the whole thing they only do some of the records but we do wish to have a one formula over here regardless those may be number of tags regardless those may be tax number we want this one formula to still find the match between the corresponding cities actually this can be done by combining the two approaches together within one nested formula now let me quick copy of this sheet and draw on my screen to show you how this will be done we are going to do an XLOOKUP over here uh, we could do that with only three arguments x lookup if we have three arguments so we'll be looking for this custom id within the second argument range which will be those custom id over here and then return the third argument range which will be those cities over here now we understand if you do regular X lookup that won't find the match because one is text, one is number. First, we can try that lookup as number approach. I'm going to make the first argument to be a value function against that custom ID. So that means we're looking for that custom ID as a number. If that custom ID is number in the second argument range, then it's gonna find the match, then the corresponding city will be returned, then this will be fine. But if that custom ID in the second argument range is a text, then this will not find a match, you'll get an A. But now we are going to incorporate the fourth argument. Let me remove the code in bracket and add the fourth argument back in. So the fourth argument is a value that will be returned by this X lookup if that first argument value is not being matched in the second argument range. So we we'll look for that custom ID as a number if that's not being matched in the second argument. Then we we'll wish the format can look up as a text. So that can be done in the fourth argument by doing a lot of X lookup over here, but look up the custom ID as a text. So the fourth argument will be a lot of X lookup function. And it has three arguments. Now in the first argument, We'll be looking for that custom ID, then use ampersand to combine with a blank. So we're looking for that as a text within the second argument range. Once find a match, then return the corresponding cities. This extra cup, we're looking for that custom ID, combine it with blank to turn that into a text. As we said here, we're looking for that custom ID as number. If that finds a match, then the corresponding value in the third argument will be returned. That will be fine. The fourth argument will have no impact at all. But if the first argument as number is not being matched in the second argument, that means that custom ID must be a text in the second argument. So when this not being matched over here, then this fourth argument will be returned, which is to look up that custom ID as a text in the second argument range. Regardless, the custom ID is being number or text, in column H or in column B, by combining the two X lookup together, it will still be found. In this X lookup inside our series, we have learned to combine X lookup inside a lot of X lookup before, but that was combining that in the third argument. Now let me demonstrate this formula. Let me go back to the first sheet. Let me do that formula in the cell K13. Equal sign 
xl tab to insert the function. The first argument, I will make that cosmetic to be number. So value function va tab to insert the function against the cell h13 closing bracket, comma. That's the first argument. We're looking for the cosmetic d as a number because the value function will turn that into number. Now the second argument will be the range we're looking within, which will be column B. Let me use my left arrow key to go to B13, then control shift arrow down, F4, makes it absolute, comma. The third argument will be the range to return the value, which will be column C. Let me use my left arrow key to go to column C, from C13, control shift arrow down, F4 to make the absolute, comma. Now, we are going to do the fourth argument as a lot of x lookup, but we'll be looking up the cosmic d as text. So that will be a lot of xl tab to insert the function. Use left arrow key to go to the cosmic d, which is h13, then ampersand with double quotes, double quotes, which means blank, which turns that into a text, comma. Looking for that within the Column B, let me use my left arrow key to go to B13, Control, Shift, Arrow down, F4, makes that absolute. And then the third argument will be the city in column C. Let me use my left arrow key, go to C13, Control, Shift, Arrow down, F4, makes it absolute. And then closing bracket. Now, this closing bracket is only for that second X lookup. I need to have a one more closing bracket for the first X lookup. So, a lot of closing bracket and enter while getting the city for that first one. Actually, for the first one, even without having that fourth argument, it was to give us the result because that cosmetic one for the four in the column B is a number. So this will give the match. But now if I copy the formula down, you will see every one of those has found the match. For the second record, since that 11869 in column B is a text, that means this first X lookup over here, they won't find the match. When that doesn't find the match, then the fourth argument will be returned. And the fourth argument is looking for that 11869 as text in that column B. So that does find the match, then we get the result. So this is the approach to nest one X lookup inside another X lookup in the fourth argument that allows us to look up a value either as number or a text. Regardless, they will be found. I hope you have mastered nesting two X lookup function to match both number and text. If you like this video, please give a thumb up and subscribe to my channel so you can learn more. If you have any questions, please write a comment below and I will answer your questions. In the next video of the X lookup inside our series, you are going to learn how to use X lookup to look for an item number, return its corresponding item picture or vice versa, to look for an item picture, return its corresponding sales dollar amount. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Thank you.